Uh, today we are fortunate to have Dr. Vanya Jordanova with us. Vanya Jordanova is a senior scientist at Los Alamos National Laboratory with over 25 years of experience bridging theoretical plasma physics, data analysis, and computational modeling. Her expertise includes geomantic storm dynamics and processes coupling ionospheric and manthospheric regions. Originally fr from Bulgaria, she received a PhD in atmospheric and space sciences from the University of Michigan in 1995. Before joining the laboratory in 2006, she worked for 10 years at the University of New Hampshire. She has more than 150 scientific publications and is the main editor of the new Elsevier book titled Ring Current Investigations, The Quest for Space Weather Prediction. She's a co-investigator on the NASA Van Allen Probes mission and principal investigator for the SHIELDS program. SHIELDS uh, stands for Space Hazards Induced Near Earth by Large Dynamic Storms. So this project was a uh, winner of R&D 100 Award in 2017. Currently, she's the chair of the NSF Geospace Environment, Mo Environment Modeling, that is GEM, Program Steering Committee. So uh, welcome, Danya, and uh, I let you start the presentation now. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Talk about ring and plays a central role in um, in the magnetosphere. So uh, the ring current population consists of uh, KV uh, energy particles, and it is intermediate energy between the radiation belts (MeV) particles and the plasma sphere, the lower energy EV particle population. So the ring current flows here in the near equatorial plane and uh, closes through region two filter line currents through the ionosphere. And that is how it affects the convection electric field, which feedbacks on the particle dynamics. Also, uh, the anisotropic ring current populations excite waves, and these waves affect uh, the dynamics of the radiation belts and can also feed the plasma sphere. So the ring current particles are lost through the most important ones are charge exchange with the neutron sphere. So these are important processes that couple the ring current with uh, the other regions. And there are different ways to study ring current dynamics. Uh, one way is to use single particle motion to describe the motion of particles under the influence of external electric and magnetic fields. Or you can use uh, MHD or multi-fluid theory. And in this case, the plasma is treated as conducting fluid. And this allows a self-consistent coupling of the magnetosphere and ionosphere to be studied. And the third way is to use kinetic theory so in this case, uh, you adopt, uh, describe the evolution through a distribution fu uh, function of particles. So let's first discuss uh, transport in different electric and magnetic fields. As it was talked before uh, my, by my magnetic field, uh, of um, uh, includes contribution from the internal magnetic field, which is mostly dipolar, and external magnetic field sources. And particles undergo three periodic motions. One is gyration around the magnetic field lines. The other one is bouncing between the mirror points. And the third one is drifting around the Earth. So if we know the magnetic field, for example, using some empirical models that have been developed, uh, you can calculate the gradient curvature velocity that describes how these particles are transported and drifting around the Earth. So for the radiation belt particle, this is sufficient. However, for the ring current particles, we need to consider also the E cross B drift, 
which is the drift due to the electric field, which can be represented as superposition of convection and corrotation fields. And the simple uh, models that were developed uh, the ones by volume. So we see the convection electric field increases with radial distances from Earth, while the quotation electric field mostly dominates here near Earth. So this is a picture of the electric field from this simple analytical model. And this is a picture from the Weimar uh, empirical model. So as we see the realistic uh, electric field, and this is the electric potential, is more uh, dynamic and asymmetric than this uh, simple model. So I will be mostly talking today about and showing examples from the model that we have developed here, the ring current atmosphere interaction uh, model with self-consistent magnetic field. So uh, this is a um, coupling of two uh, models. One is the RAM model that solves the kinetic equations for ions and electrons. So far, we include proton, oxygen, and helium ions, but more could be included. And we uh, include the major losses, and you need to prescribe the electric field to drive the model or to calculate itself consistently. For the magnetic field, we are coupling RAM with a 3D equilibrium code, which solves this force balance equation. So as we calculate the pressure from the ring current model, we pass for the calculation of the magnetic field. And then the magnetic field is passed back to the RAM model to trace the particles. So we need uh, to solve these equations. We need some initial conditions, which are usually taken from uh, empirical uh, data, previous satellite observations, or specific observations during the storm that we are studying. And we also need boundary conditions, which can be provided either from data, very usually we use geosynchronous data, or also could be provided from other models. And uh, there is a version of uh, RAM ACB that is coupled with the Batsaras model from the space weather modeling framework. And uh, in this case, conditions for RAM SCB. So just to look a little bit more in details at the kinetic equation here is shown for, um, so the, uh, the kinetic equation describes the changes of number of particles in unit of volume. And uh, the left-hand side of this equation describes the drift of the particles. The right-hand side describes the different loss processes, which I will uh, describe uh, further. Uh, for this particular uh, model, we have to uh, take into account that we use uh, gyro averaging and bounce averaging between the mirror points. So this allow us to reduce uh, the independent variables from six to four. So we consider radial distance in the equatorial plane, magnetic local time, which is very important when you study the ring current as there are many asymmetries that you need to take into account. The energy from about 100 kV to 400 kV and all pitch angles. And this are the equations that are solved by the uh, self system uh, magnetic field. So uh, the, from the ring current model, we calculate the perpendicular and uh, parallel pressure, and we fit into these equations to calculate the magnetic field. So the studies of the ring current first focus on uh, the motion of the particles in different electric fields. So here are examples uh, in a simplified model uh, like volume sturm type compared with a more complex Amy or uh, Weimar models. So uh, in a simple model, uh, as particles are injected from the night side, so most of the pods that I will be showing are in the equatorial plane, 
and usually the dark side here of the earth indicates the night side and uh, the local time is shown. so right the lower energy particles uh, drift inward and surround uh, eastward the higher energy particles when drift uh, inward and surround westward so this uh, um, simple uh, picture becomes much more complicated when you consider a more realistic uh, high resolution electric field models as are shown here so there are uh, asymmetry and the particle trapping also is very different so when you integrate the effects uh, here on the right hand side we show the pressure uh, actually the ring current density but this is equivalent to the pressure uh, of the proton ring current for different energy ranges. And again, the top is shown for uh, the Amy model and the bottom from Abel and Stern model. So our uh, original understanding of was that uh, the peak of the ring current is usually on the dusk side. However, when we started to use more complex uh, models and more realistic, it was obtained that the peak of the ring current could be on energies. It's usually around midnight for the lower energies on the dawn side and for the dusk and for the high energy on the dusk side. So the ring current is much more dynamic than it was expected. Uh, the next step was to start developing uh, self-consistent electric field models. And this is an example using uh, the, uh, uh, the ring current model of Fock et al, which was coupled with uh, the rice convection model and are shown the perpendicular pressure, the parallel pressure and the current density. And as we see, uh, during a main phase of the storm, when we use a self-consistent electric field, the uh, peak of the ring current pressure is here on uh, uh, around midnight. So this is a consistent uh, feature for ring current dynamics. And also an example uh, comparison with the DST index when you integrate uh, the, the energy of the ring current and using the dessler parker skopke relation to calculate the DST index. So here is shown a simulation for a storm using, again, different electric field models, the observed DST index with the solid line. And uh, again, when you use a uh, not self-consistent model, it is possible to underestimate or overestimate the DST index and a better agreement and best agreement in this case was obtained using a self-consistent electric field. So then uh, um, we proceeded to our development models that use a self-consistent magnetic field, like the model that we have developed, RAM SCB. So what are the effects using a self-consistent magnetic field? So here is an example showing again the evolution of the pressure during a storm, the DST index shown on the top. And uh, the top row using dipolar magnetic field and the bottom row using a self-consistent magnetic field. So, um, it is clear that when you use a self-consistent magnetic field, the pressure is lower. So this was something that we did not expect uh, to see. So when uh, the magnetic field is stretched, it wasn't as effective at, uh, at trapping particles as the dipolar magnetic field. But again, this is a feature that we see consistently. So we also uh, compared uh, the uh, self-consistently calculated magnetic field with observations. So here on the left side is on the right side is shown the difference between the self-consistent magnetic field and a dipolar magnetic field of the Earth. So at lower L shell uh, less than four, 
the magnetic field is dipolar. The differences start to occur at larger than uh, five or six, and at L larger than a, the radial distances, uh, the differences could be more than uh, 50 percent. So comparing the calculated magnetic field with the emphasis uh, measurements of the Van Allen probes, here are shown observations with a black line, the dipolar magnetic field with a green line, and the simulation with the red dots. So it is clear that the self-consistent magnetic field uh, compares better with, uh, with the observation than the dipolar, but still it is underestimating the stretching of the, realist, of the real magnetic field. And uh, the last topic about the transport is the consideration of the uh, induced electric field. Since the magnetic field is changing, it induces the electric field. And the question is how to include that effect in the simulations. So one of the study, uh, one of the uh, uh, way is to use an earthworm propagating electromagnetic pulse, as shown here in figure uh, from Ganushkin et al. And what they studied was to simulate the transport of electrons, medium energy electrons, from 10 Ari to geosynchronous orbit. And here is shown on top the observations and then the simulations without and with induced electric field. And what they showed that you can obtain an increase in the electron fluxes here up to two orders of magnitude when uh, you use this induced electric field. Another way to investigate this effect is to calculate the electric field from the changes of the magnetic field. So this is a study that was led by Sorin Zaharia and uh, again showing the simulations with and without induced electric field, the pressure in the equatorial plane, and here comparison with the DST index. So uh, the measurements are shown with red, uh, with green is without induced electric field. And so the effect of the induced electric field was weaker, main phase recurrent, but stronger near the peak and then during the recovery phase. So it provides, again, better agreement with observations. Okay, so the next uh, topic I would like to discuss is about recurrent uh, sources and ion composition. So observations of, uh, of recurrent, so this um, uh, my presentation mostly focuses on modeling uh, ring current dynamics, since there is no time you know, to cover uh, a lot of topics. But uh, we have also a lot of observations of uh, uh, ring current distributions. And these are examples from the empty uh, gem instruments. And uh, what was uh, shown here is that the distributions of the proton and the oxygen ions during a store as well oxygen increases significantly during so both population increase however the increase of the oxygen was larger than the increase of the proton during uh, during the store so the new founding was the dominance of oxygen ions near minimum DST. And then from statistics, it was found that usually during a moderate storm, uh, the protons is the dominant contribution of the ring current. However, during the major storms, the oxygen would become the major contribution of the ring current. So here on the right is another analysis uh, of empty data over two and a half years by Yanis Douglas. And again, showing that the energy range between 10 and 100 keV is the one that dominates mostly to the total energy density. And then comparing observation during fire time with observation 
active time. So in that, uh, usually the proton is the dominant uh, ion. However, the contribution of O plus would increase significantly with uh, geomagnetic activity. Uh, very important for in current dynamics is the plasma sheet source population. So here are some examples again of observations of uh, uh, the source population at geosynchronous orbit, a study by Yang et al. for um, KEV particles. And what was again shown is that the oxygen density increases systematically both with the solar cycle and with geomagnetic activity. And on the right hand side here, another study from uh, Chris Murikis and colleagues using uh, cluster data, and they investigated uh, observation uh, further down the tail between 15 to 19 RE during several years. And they found again results. So observations or um, the plasma, uh, the with orange from Young et al. Here, what I mentioned, and with blue from Nose et al. And again, it is uh, shown that uh, O plus increases uh, with both solar and geomagnetic activity. So, how does this source population affect the ring current dynamics? So, here are some studies that we did. Uh, using geosynchronous data to drive our ring current model. So we investigated a storm during March 2001, which was a great uh, storm with more than 300 uh, GST depression. And using the fluxes from non geosynchronous data during the storm. So here we clearly show how the density of the uh, ion increases during the storm and then decreases during the recovery phase of the storm. So we did several uh, test simulations and uh, for comparison with the DSP index shown here with uh, the black line. So for example, if we did not consider this change of the plasma sheet density through the storm, so if we use the observations during quiet time to drive the model, then this is the result shown here with the green line. So we see some increase in the ring current buildup, but not sufficient. It was only when we included this rise of the density during the main phase that we were able to get uh, the real ring current buildup that agreed with the observations. And then during the recovery phase, if we keep the elevated density, we would see a strong uh, ring current and overestimation of the observations. Again, we had to use the drop of the density here during the recovery phase to be able to reproduce this fast ring current decay. So this clearly shows how important are the dynamic changes of the plasma sheet to be considered when simulating in current dynamics. So another topic is um, uh, most recently addressed, how are the uh, particle transported from the tail to geosynchronous orbit and further in? So this is a very interesting study with the rise convection model. So they studied the random injections of bursty bulk flows and bubbles. So what they found that they needed to consider these bursty, bursty bulk flow injections on the night side in order to get a realistic buildup of the ring current inside, even inside of geosynchronous orbit. And then they considered uh, different uh, test simulations, how important is the transport from geosynchronous uh, toward the Earth, since many of the ring current models are driven with geosynchronous observations. So uh, their comparison using the base run with 
uh, the varsity bowel flows injections or using a run with a uniform boundary condition at um, geosynchronous or with a smoothed boundary condition of, at geosynchronous indicated that there was only about 10% differences. So uh, that is why they concluded that the bursty bulk flows are very important for the transport energy from the tail to geosynchronous orbit, but not as important inside of geosynchronous orbit. So the next topic I would like to discuss is uh, the different ring current losses. So as I mentioned, the most important uh, loss process for the ring current is charge exchange. In this case, a trapped energetic ion collides with, uh, 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 with uh, neutral hydrogen atom and the result is energetic neutral atom. The loss process is collisions at low altitude. So particles with small pitch angles inside of the so-called loss cone mirror at low altitude, and then they are again lost in the atmosphere. So a study was performed uh, by Raluca Ili to investigate how different geocoronal models affect ring current dynamics. So they uh, used five different models of the gel corona shown here in the top panel and calculated using uh, these models as losses for the ring current. What are the ring current distributions? And they clearly show that charge exchange uh, and the gel coronal model uh, density in particular is important. It's very important. You can obtain a different strength of the ring current also the morphology of the ring current changes uh, depending on the assumed density. And here in the bottom row is shown synthetic ENA images assuming these uh, different neutral hydrogen distributions. And again, you can see a clear differences in the images that you obtain just by using different joker on of hydrogen density and distribution around the Earth. Uh, two more processes uh, here I would like to discuss. One is the Coulomb collisions with thermal plasma. So ring current particles uh, have higher energy. So when they collide with the uh, lower energy plasma population, they are both scattered in pitch angle and they lose energy. And you can describe these processes through the Fokker-Planck equation. In this case, you also need a plasma sphere model to uh, calculate the density of the different uh, species. And plasma wave scattering, this is also a very complex uh, process, but ring current ions can be lost due to scattering by electromagnetic cyclotron waves. Um, in order to address this, um, this process, you need to solve a uh, diffusion equation, which is similar to the one shown here, but uh, the diffusion coefficient is from quasi-linear diffusion from wave particle interaction. So the scattering in this case is, again, reducing the pitch angle of the particle. So the particle will uh, will uh, mirror further down the line and will be lost due to collisions with the atmosphere. So we did some uh, studies comparing the effects from the different uh, loss processes. And these are comparison with polar data during a uh, small uh, magnetic storm, showing the results on the date side here, the two panels, and on the night side, on the right panels. So this is the distribution function as function of energy. So as we discussed before, from transport, the lower energy uh, populations drift eastward, the higher energy drift westward. And in between, around uh, between 1 and 30 kV here, is a population that drifts very slowly. 
So this is the population that usually experiences the most losses and it is forming this uh, deep, uh, sometimes called stagnation deep in the distribution function that is observed. So what we see that uh, charge exchange uh, losses are important here at lower L shell and also Coulomb collision losses are important. So they are important where uh, the density of this population, the geocorona or the plasma sphere populations are high. If we look on the night side, the effect from these collisional losses is small because we have constant injection of particles from the plasma shape. And then the loss due to scattering by EMIC waves. Again, to estimate energy ranges are based of the lifetimes of recurrent protons at uh, around L4. And with the solid line is shown the charge exchange losses with the dashed lines scattering by plasma by EMIC waves. So we see that the scattering of EMIC waves becomes important at higher energy, uh, larger than about 10 keV. So when we included this process in, uh, in our model and simulated uh, considering both pitch angle and energy diffusion. So what we saw here, the energy scattering, again, comparison distribution function versus energy. If we include the energy scattering, it is a very small effect. When we include the pitch angle scattering, the effect is more significant. And another point I wanted to make is that uh, it, uh, you can see also non-local effects from scattering by plasma waves. So for example, here calculating the excitation of the waves, we see it is mostly uh, on the dusk side, whereas these comparisons here are on the dusk side, on the dawn side, NLT6. So as particles from these energies drift through the dusk side and get scattered and lost by these waves, you can see the effect even later around the dawn side. So it is very important to consider that uh, transport can also uh, affect, uh, be affected you know, by, by this process. And uh, um, how we include uh, wave particle interactions in our model. Usually we calculate, uh, we use the dispersion relation with input parameters from, from the model to calculate the growth, convective growth rate of EMIC waves, integrate them to along uh, wave paths to get the integrated wave gain and use this relation to uh, calculate the wave amplitude. Once you obtain the wave amplitude, calculate the diffusion coefficient, obtain the new parameters, and go back again to the calculation of the excitation of the waves. So that is how we have this implemented self-consistent loop in our simulations. So uh, recently we have proceeded to improve on this uh, empirical relation and using uh, hybrid simulations to derive a better scaling uh, fits so this is work done by Jacob Bornig and more recently by uh, Sean Fu. And then a new uh, relation was derived um, using the parameters and the relation between the wave amplitudes on the ring current uh, and plasma sphere parameters. And I should note that uh, this is still, that is still room of improvement on uh, this particular topic and including uh, a more self-consistent ways of calculating this effect on the ring current. So we apply our model. Uh, this is an example studying the scattering of the ions by ink waves and reproducing the proton aurora. So here are observations from image and mapping to the equatorial plane the uh, precipitating uh, region maps on, uh, 
on the day side. And this is a simulation from our model considering uh, helium plus band EMIC wave, calculating, as I described, their uh, wave growth and amplitude. We found that the most unstable regions are here on the day side. And when we calculated the precipitation of the 10 to 40 kV protons uh, by this process, we found a very good agreement with the mapped uh, proton precipitation observed from uh, image uh, FUV. So we claim that cyclotron resonant wave particle interactions are a viable mechanism for the generation of suboral proton arcs. We also investigated the by EMIC wave. So this is a different uh, or, uh, a model to calculate the wave amplitudes and then the precipitation of the electrons here on the top and the protons here on the bottom. So uh, the 100 uh, kV protons are shown here precipitating and uh, However, the electrons were in the MEV energy range. And also we found that uh, when the waves are excited at higher L shell, the lower energy, one MEV, electrons can be precipitated. If the waves are excited on the uh, closer to the Earth, then we have precipitation by 1.5 MeV electrons. So the energy of the resonating particles increases. And then the integrated effects uh, uh, of the different loss processes for the uh, total uh, energy dynamics of the ring current. Here is comparison from the different loss processes. And what we found that, again, confirming previous studies, that the charge exchange losses, so this is the energy loss as function of time during a storm, and the peak uh, of the storm is here. So the charge exchange is the dominant loss process. Then the loss from convection drift out of the day side boundary of the model becomes important and of the order of the charge exchange one uh, near the minimum DST. And similarly, the scattering by EMIC waves, the precipitation, also becomes important here during the main phase um, and becomes of the order of the charge exchange loss. Uh, the Coulomb collision loss is usually about an order of magnitude smaller. And finally, uh, I wanted uh, to say a few words about uh, ozone's are studied much in the past uh, since most of the energy of the ring current is contained in the ions. However, recently, especially with the launch of the Van Allen probes, uh, more attention was paid to the ring current electron dynamics because anisotropic ring current KV electron populations are unstable to the generation of Whistler mode waves and uh, these waves then can affect significantly the uh, MEV radiation belt electrons. So here uh, we did a study calculating the, in the chorus wave instability using uh, the electron populations from our model. And we found that uh, usually the stable regions are around the, uh, the dome site and they are in agreement with observation. This is where typically the most, uh, the strongest uh, chorus waves are observed at large L shell uh, around the dome side. And this is a comparison also uh, with a wave proxy uh, from uh, Chen et Tao, which is measured by NOAA poles and estimating the instability and mapping with uh, the Van Allen props, obtaining this uh, proxy for the amplitude of the chorus waves. 
So we did simulations of um, uh, ring current electron dynamics, and we look at the precipitation of, uh, of the electrons uh, from different processes. So uh, if so, here are some results for different energy, 30, 100, or 300 kV electrons as function of time, as function of L. So L around geosynchronous orbit here from L3. And uh, again, during, during the storm. So as we see, if we don't consider scattering by Corus and his waves, the precipitation is very small. It's on when we include these processes that turn up ring current uh, electrons at these energy ranges, and it is in good agreement with uh, pulse observations. Uh, then, as we know, the chorus waves not only scatter electrons, but they also accelerate them. So we performed a study, including the acceleration by chorus waves. And here is a comparison of uh, fluxes that are measured by the Van Allen probes uh, during the storm, again, as function of time. And these are different uh, simulations, including different uh, processes. So when we include the transport from convection in the model, uh, our model can reproduce this enhancement here of the lower energy 3050 kV electrons. However, this transport is not effective at injecting the higher energy electrons. When we include the local acceleration by the color space, then we can obtain a very large acceleration here of the higher energy 200 300 kV electrons, and even in this case, the model overestimated the observations. So we either need to consider additional loss mechanism or to have a better uh, global wave model distributions. And uh, the last um, uh, loss process I would like to discuss is uh, fuel line curvature scattering. So again, this is a process that, that hasn't been investigated much in the past, but now uh, we are turning our attention towards it. And uh, this is a process that is important when um, the magnetic field is stretched and the ion gyro radius is comparable to the radius of the curvature of the magnetic field. So it is usually more important for the heavy uh, ions like uh, oxygen ions. And here is a calculation from uh, Margaret Chen et al. using the RCME model, evaluating the X should be important here at larger L shell, the precipitating energy flux from the electrons and from the oxygen ions. So the precipitation for the electrons is from uh, chorus waves, and uh, it is intense and reach lower uh, magnetic latitudes uh, on the morning side at 3 MLT. That is where you know the chorus waves are the most uh, are the largest. Then the precipitation from field line curvature scattering of the ions oxygen ions is sporadic and localized, and the magnitude is smaller than the electron precipitation. Another study I would like to mention by uh, each of you using RAM SCB for the same storm, and uh, they also found a strong ion precipitation at larger L shell on the night side. Uh, however, comparisons with uh, post uh, observations show that more ion precipitation is needed in the inner region, probably due to EMIC waves. So here are some uh, references uh, that uh, you may go and uh, read more about what I discussed. And specifically, I would like to uh, bring to your attention this book that we have recently published uh, in current investigation, the, the Quest for Space Weather Prediction. 
So in this book, you can uh, read more about uh, observations, theory, simulations in great detail about the Earth's ring current and space weather effects. And also there is a special chapter comparing the dynamics of the ring current system at Earth with other, uh, with ring current systems at other strongly uh, magnetized uh, planets. So I would like to end with some open questions uh, for, um, uh, for ring current dynamics uh, that uh, we need to investigate in the future. So we still uh, need to understand better from uh, the tail to the inner uh, magnetosphere. And uh, as I mentioned, the effect of burstable flows and bubbles. Uh, we also uh, need to study more the role of convective uh, versus inductive electric fields uh, and uh, how the uncomposition variability affects the recurrent dynamics, especially the excitations of the different uh, plasma waves and their effect on the particles, and then the coupling with the ionosphere I didn't have time to discuss. But this is also a very important uh, process for the self-consistent calculation of the electric field. Thank you. So I can address any questions. Thank you, Anya. That was an excellent talk. Uh, very clear and concise. So thank you for that. Uh, we do have some questions. Uh, the first question is from Richard Denton. Uh, what, what magnetic field effects are missing because of the use of equilibrium field? Pardon, could you repeat what magnetic field? Effects are missing because of Effect. the use of equilibrium field. Okay, so because of the equilibrium field, uh, probably a very fast changes uh, cannot be uh, included in um, in the changes of, of the magnetic field because uh, you have to um, perform you know some iterations to reach stability so you have some limits on uh, how how fast the magnetic field could change so i think this uh, this approach is not suitable for uh, further down the tail when you have you know, reconnection and other processes, so you cannot apply it. However, uh, both the rise convection model, our model, you know, we are using uh, this approach in the inner magnetosphere, so it is uh, applicable for, for the inner magnetosphere. Okay, perfect. Uh, so next question is uh, from Sandeep. Sandeep wants to know how much is the contribution from electrons to ring current? The contribution from the electron to the ring current is not much. Usually from observation, it is about 10% uh, at most, uh, up to 20%. To and this is also what we obtain from, from the simulation. So the energy density is mostly carried by the ring current ions. Okay, yep, thank you. Uh, next question is from Dibyundu sir. Um, uh, he wants to know how to run the AMIE model online. Oh, this I really don't know. <laughs> uh, we have, um, yeah, we have used it in the past, but uh, yeah, this is not a model that we are uh, developing or maintaining. So I, I can probably send some some references. Uh, so Gang Lu, Art Richmond are probably people that can give a better better answer. So, so yeah, that's I fine. could send yeah. some some references. Yeah. Okay. So we can post them on the website uh, later. Sure. So, uh, uh, one more question from Dibyendu Sur. Why collisionless, uh, collisional losses of uh, ring current is higher in high magnetic latitudes? Oh, because um, you have, uh, just because of the increase of the density. So, as you go close to the Earth, 
but the plasma sphere and the geochronal density increase. And uh, that is why when you have particles with uh, smaller pitch angles that mirror at higher magnetic latitude, they encounter a denser uh, population, geochronal and plasmospheric. And when the density is larger, then the loss is larger. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is from Sergi Apatenko. Um, can O plus appear in the inner magnetosphere without significant ring current increase? Um, I, okay, so probably this is a big uh, question about direct injection from the ionosphere. So it is uh, possible, although I don't think, um, at least from the studies, it has been observed that it, at least in sight of geosynchronous, uh, you have you know, direct injection from the ionosphere to the ring current region. So it is possible, but I don't think it has been observed. Okay. Uh, so uh, one more question, uh, the last question today. Uh, it's um, from uh, Antonova. Uh, how it is possible to model ionospheric source of ring current ions? Uh, so usually the way people address the ionospheric uh, source, they, uh, they do the coupling with uh, ionospheric model. For example, uh, the space weather modeling framework includes uh, different uh, models, and one of them is the polar wind outflow model. So uh, in this way, you can calculate the ionospheric outflow, and then you can uh, use it as a source for, uh, for the ring current at, uh, at larger L shell. So this is uh, one way to, to address this self-consistent uh, coupling with the atmosphere. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so um, once again, thank you, Anya, for a wonderful talk. And um, uh, for all the uh, listeners, uh, we will join again next week. Uh, next week, uh, Jerry Goldstein will be talking about the plasma sphere. So uh, see you all next week again at the same time. And um, have a great week ahead. So thank you again, Vanya. Thank you.